I've been asked this question a few times on the, my journeys of Q and A's. <clears throat> People want to know the difference between a trans channel and a channel. Well, let's see. Um, when Ranth appeared to me in 1977, and then began that incredible year from February on, teaching me um, about the kingdom of heaven, about everything. And then finally one day introducing what I was supposed to do about this. Uh, everything, the wall went out, I saw all kinds of, the wall disappeared. And here was the future rushing like a locomotive into my living room. Things I'd never seen, people I'd never met. And the ram in me. <clears throat> and when the ram finally took me out of my body for the first time, I was scared to death. And he says, are you gonna stay in your body and avoid death or you wanna leave it and see that you've conquered it? That was a great question. That day that I went down that tunnel for the first time and came back and it was still afternoon. It's a huge day for me. And I didn't know what that was. I didn't know up to that point who Edgar Casey was. I mean, I didn't believe in astrology. My mother bought books on the subject. I never was brought up in an environment uh, that had so much free time that one could pursue one's boredom for lack of being busy. I never had that, that wonderful privilege. So when this happened to me, the only thing I had experienced was the church early in my life, which I wrote about in my book, A State of Mind, and realized that the God that I love was not this, the God that was in this, this, this teaching. So I was really, I had had experiences, but thought everybody had had them. So to answer your question, when I, I wanted to ask Ram what had happened to me and what does this mean, who am I? I mean, who am I that saw the cobwebs on the ceiling above my body? Well, I'm looking at my hairdo that I was so, you know, particular about and, and my clothes and my clean house and discover I was up by a cobweb. And who was it that was seeing that? And who was it that went through this tunnel and went rushing through that tunnel and hit that wall of light and came back? And I'd never be the same. I'd never look at myself as the same. So I said to the ramp, so what am, uh, what am I doing? I said, well, I just took care of your body while you were gone. I said, well, I went, were, did I die? I said, yes, in a sorts, you died. Meaning that if I hadn't been here, your body would have, your heart would have stopped beating. Um, your cells would start exploding in a matter of 30 minutes. So the process of decay sits in and rigor within hours after that. Well, well so that begged a whole explanation. So I went to the bookstore the following day after this much involved conversation and the books fell out on the floor in front of me and I picked them up and there are lights all over them. And so this is when I learned about Edgar Casey, and I learned about a few people that I'd never heard of in my life. And uh, so I go and I said, so am I this medium? Am I a medium? Is this what I'm going to be? Instead of dying, I'm going to be a medium. And Ram says, no, you're not a medium. Well, I'm in a trance. No, you're not in a trance. No, you left your body. You died. You, you survived leaving your body. And I said, well, what is that? Then what am I? So am I just going to be the reincarnated person? And this is what I am? He said, no, you're a channel. A medium is somebody who goes into a trance state and can pick up the frequencies of infrared, low band, medium band, high band, infrared. And they can see disincarnate entities, they can hear voices, da, 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 which is natural in every human being. And so they simply block out the environment around them and his, listen to an environment inside of them at a higher frequency. Cool, is that what I'm doing? No, that's not what you're doing. Well, what am I doing? Is you're a channel. Channel means you leave your body. A different mind uses the body for expression. It's a very rare event. So there's no such thing as a trance channel. You're either out of here or you're in here. 
If you are trans medium, I don't know why we have to say trans, if you're a medium, it seems like you're the intermediary between um, two or more parties, the person asking the question and the people answering it, and you're simply the person who, by proxy, is giving the information. So you're in a trance when you do that, and in a trance simply means that you block out the information and the environment that's around you when you begin to listen to another frequency. That frequency is infrared. Everybody has that capacity. Our midbrain is actually created to uh, modulate infrared and then send those frequencies on to our, to our frontal lobe. In my case, my persona, my observer, my spirit, my soul left this house. So I'm not my brain. My brain is a processing unit. I'm not my body. My body is experimental unit. It's what experiences this reality. But what I really am is greater than that. And so I go to that subatomic world through the transformation of that tunnel and ramp the, in that mind of his, is holding my body together through the back of my brain. Now, we have a different being using a body that isn't necessarily theirs. By proxy in a way, but not really. Being uses the back of my brain, has its own connections to my eyes, my mouth, everybody has this, her body, so the mind of God could actually turn on in your subconscious and actually distort your reality and bring about a greater one using yourself. So I'm a channel. My job is to get out of the way and to be gone while another being for reasons of destiny uses my body in a mindful way and performs extraordinary phenomenon. So who is Ramtha? <clears throat> Ramtha. Well, we're still finding that out. And after, let's see, he appeared to me when I was 31 years old. So it was a young woman. And I'm 58 now, and he's still an enigma to me. Um, he's a being that lived 35,000 years ago. And of course, we run into immediately science's model of history and archaeology. Um, but there's a lot of problems in explaining Homo erectus when you still find Cro-Magnum, you know, dating back 10 million years ago, skull. So we have a little problem with, with archaeology and history. Ramtha was here 35,000 years ago uh, at a time period vividly explained by him over the years, over these long years. And he was a being whose race of people lived in the Pacific in a place called Lemuria or Mu. And his race of people came, as he said, from beyond the North Star. Now this is getting out there. This is coming back where really species uh, of different genesis of beings from different parts of the universe were visiting at that time, still are today, but at that time actually set up races or are uh, sections of people. Ramtha was born in Lemuria, was here while the planet was being torn apart, uh, became a very powerful being in a place down by the Gulf of Mexico, uh, at war with another race, and uh, he was endeavoring to make sense of his family's profound spiritual intuitiveness, their mind was uh, who they were, but, and they had extraordinary capacity, but trying to make peace with the warring faction, destroyed his family. This is a ha great hatred for the God of his own people. And they call that God the unknown God. It was, it didn't have a face, it was life itself. And so he began this remarkable journey of destroying his enemy and, and everybody else. And he lived this very colorful, extraordinary warlike life and fearless. That being uh, would, would betray himself, end up with a, a mortal wound, 
and would sit on a rock for seven years contemplating his life in deep focus. Ramtha then one day had an extraordinary experience, had an out-of-body experience. That out-of-body experience set him on a journey to find out where that came from. So it took him another seven years to duplicate the experience. So enlightenment came because the mind that he was through his adversity of illness and sickness was changed into the mind that could leave the body due to pain. And then that began the quest of discovering that whole new possibility of what he was. And that eventually he would find that the unknown God of his people was actually the source of life. It was and is that where we have our being from. It is that quintessential quantum field. It is that quintessential unfolding and infolding from the eternal void. And that, that extraordinary intelligence that comes from that is what we really are. And that the unknown God is life itself and would find himself in a remarkable position of being able to declare that as himself. And then began the journey that once he had conquered and had figured this all out, then he looked at the horizon, which he says, where the gold meets the blue. I want to go there. Well, the mind then begins its journey and the body follows. And so the being worked with frequency and one day ascended and left his army. In time, so where is he gone? Uh, the stairway to heaven is made up of seven great steps and seven great frequencies. And Ram went up that stairway. Every time we, we raise the frequency in our body, and when we do that, it's because our mind moves to another part of the brain that specializes in that frequency. And when we rest our mind in that part of the brain, then we start to vibrate. And our vibrations throughout our body allows us to move faster than the matter in which we live in. So our, our frequency becomes fast. He just raised his frequency. And as he modulated his frequency, he raised it higher and higher. And is it possible that a body can vibrate without shattering? He went on and on and on and finally disappeared. Now he disappeared to us, but he's still in time on his own frequency time. So this is a being that lived 35,000 years ago, came, who, whose, whose family came from beyond the North Star, who lived a rich and controversial life, was afraid of no one, had an army of two million people, and ascended at the end of his life. And where did he go? Where we all want to know. And that information of his journey and his knowledge is who is our master teacher at his school. And he's the one that shows us that we are observers, not just philosophically, but puts us in initiation and shows us we can do anything. Uh, this is the being that did it himself and calls us gods. I mean, when was the last time somebody paid you that compliment? That's Ramtha. So then back to the original question, which was, do I create my reality or is reality already existing and I choose that reality? <clears throat> Creating our reality is the fundamental principle of the school. And it is also one of the reasons that we arise to the, to the concept that we're divine, that, that to be creators means to not only imagine something and make a, a better cherry pie, but the very fact of you, the people, places, and things, and times and events in your life that constitute your life is your reality. And that they're all specific to your neural net. And when a person says, do I create my reality? The answer is, but you already are creating it. The, the, that who you are is made up of the reality that you are currently. To change that, to augment that, would be to change one of those concepts of people, places, things, times, and events, because you became expanded, that you brought into your neurological makeup an idea that you became that idea, that you embraced that idea. That new idea 
suddenly augments present reality. And because the idea is now in your mind, it's in your frontal lobe, it's reality forms. And suddenly you go, wow, I just had this great experience. I had this idea, and then this wonderful thing happened to me. I mean, what was that? The answer is you created reality. Well, what did I create it from? A source from an idea. Well, why don't I do that all the time? But you have. The idea of who you are with, where you live, what you look like, what you wear, who you talk to today, what you're going to do tomorrow, you have all created this as fundamentally your reality. So everybody in your life is an aspect of yourself. And what you did is you simply added to it. You added a new reality to that mix. So we're so busy being it, analogically it, we're talking about, it. it's like the fish in the ocean. Somebody gives the idea to the fish that it's a novel idea to ask for a drink of water. So the fish asks for a drink of water and everybody starts laughing because the, the fish is in the water. So it's sort of like saying, how do I create my reality? Well, you are the reality. You're already creating it. We only see what we are when we step out of it and we look back at who we've been and, and our life and how it has been. That's a reality. The one that we're in now is a different point of view. So does the reality that you go into already exist? Science suggests to us that parallel universes are living simultaneously, that, that we're living 100,000 lives or five lives, you know, however much you can handle simultaneously, and that all the things that we do are at work right now. Our future life is living, our past lives are living. I absolutely agree with that because I only think that the arrow of time happens to be that way because we've created the reality for time to exist that way. It's the elongation uh, and computation of multiple experiences which happen to be our own. So we say we did all this in one day, and then we slept all night, and then tomorrow we're gonna do all of that. You know, those time lags are our achievements that we put in it, and they're having to do with day and night. But the idea then that we've already had this conversation is absolutely correct. Because in no time do we have the possibility of all possibilities. And here's when, where the many worlds concept of quantum physics becomes so fabulous and is, and is one of the things at the heart of Ramtha's model of, of physics, that we are the observer. And whatever we observe through our, the new idea, the new concept that we put in our brain, that we hold and focus upon, becomes the observer in quantum physics that actually calls up from the ground of its being. The beginning process is in the very tiny that begins to augment our day. And so the day that we would have had fades away and the new day suddenly takes its place. And that all of these are, are simultaneously is absolutely correct. So you could say, well, how could I be in the future if I don't even know who I am that's in that future? But the very fact that the future exists is only a state of mind. And, and it's in our mind that that matters the most. So how do we reach out and take advantage of simultaneous worlds? By permitting ourselves to have knowledge that threatens the old paradigm of our mind that has come to a conclusion about life, can never come to a conclusion about life. Life is an eternal thing, just as we are an eternal thing. And we have to start searching for more meaning of what we are. Well, the meaning of what we are has yet to even been, be discovered by ourselves. How do we take an ordinary day and make it super extraordinary? By having the knowledge to think about the extraordinary, the day becomes it.